everyone this is Amy welcome to my channel today I'm going to show you how I do a round brush uh, floral arrangement on this glass bottle now this is a little bit different type of bottle I've painted I think one other one like this but I like to not only do the wine bottles but other types of bottles too so we're going to go ahead and get started today. I'm using 3A Magic paint brushes, a number 12, a number 4, and a number 14. All of my products that I use will be listed as affiliate links underneath my video. So if you're interested in taking a look at them and purchasing, you're welcome to do so through those links. I'm going to be using a number 8 Deer Foot Stippler and a dotting stylus. All the paints I use are folk art paints combination of enamels and multi-surface using yellow ochre, school bus yellow, cardinal red, thicket, wicker white, burnt umber, and forest moss. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started creating the bouquet. I'm going to use the number 14 round brush. All I'm doing, again this is very simple, my videos are meant to be simple for anyone that wants to learn how to paint. I'm just going to stick this brush initially into the wicker white and then tip it into the red. Now as I go I'm going to be going back and forth adding paint as I'm painting. The main thing to keep in mind when you're painting on glass is to get good coverage. All right, so I'm pushing it down and just pulling it towards the center. You can spread the petals. You can have them closer together. Up to you. And again, I'm just going to keep loading my brush as I go. The more paint you put on your item, the better the coverage is going to be. And the more durable the design will be as far as the life of the item. Now when you're painting on a bottle, not as important to have good coverage as it would be if you're painting on, say, a wine glass or some type of a drinking glass or plate, something to that extent that's going to have quite a bit of use and handling. However, you still want your, want your design to be nice and last for a while but can you see how this is just very easy very simple and meant to be I again like to encourage people to be creative I feel like it's a great not only a great hobby you can create some really awesome home decor pieces for your house my designs are not meant just to be placed on glass you can do any of these that I'm creating on any type of a surface, really. You know, whether it's a canvas or wood, metal. Just really up to you what surface you want to use. I just like to work with glass. It's fun. One thing nice about glass is you can practice your strokes on it and rinse it off. If you're, you know, don't like your results, pretty darn easy to start over. Now when cleaning your glass, you need to wash it with soap and water and then go over it with some rubbing alcohol just to make sure you get any debris that's left on get it removed before you paint and that way that will also add to the durability of your design too because you're removing debris that could interfere with the product sticking nicely to your glass. This, you know, as I started painting and I didn't think about it, but it kind of reminds me of uh, like those little, well, like candy canes, <laughs> white and and red candy canes or the little candies little mint candies that are striped again you can have yours your 
petals spaced out. You can have them closer together. It's really whatever look you're going for. And know too that the more pressure you place on your brush, the, the difference you will get in your design. Like this, it'll be a fatter, a fatter petal. But I like these just overlapping like they would if you were putting together a bouquet. And on this bouquet, we're not going to add any other flowers. I'm just doing the one type. And again, I'm going to go over these. If you think it's too transparent, go over it again. And maybe a little more white into these. I like them to be, I don't want all my petals to be the same as far as the colors go. I think it's nice when you leave them, you know, make them a little bit different. And like right here, I see a little spot. So I'm going to go over and cover it up like that. And let me look. I'm going to leave a space up here and some down here. My next thing is going to be to take my, <clears throat> my little brush and just dip it into, I'm just dipping it into the thicket. And I'm going to come down here and just quickly put my little um, stems branches, you know, however I want it to look like I'm connecting it. And I can do multiple or I can just do it as one, one thicker branch. But I'm just going to come down here and just maybe add a few. Now, see how transparent some of this is? I'm going to go back over it with the forest moss. And I can even add some yellow into it if I want to, but it's it's kind of fun just to keep adding colors in as you go, just to make it more opaque. Get away from the transparency. And do it like this. And you can keep working with your your little stems. I'm not going to concentrate too much on this up in here because I will be putting a lot of petals, a lot of, um, not petals, but leaves. So I'm not too worried about these. Also, I want to mention if you don't like to work wet on wet, go ahead and hit this with a heat gun so that it gets a little bit of drying and you'll be good to go. All right, so next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and work on my leaves because I want to give, give it a little bit of drying time while I'm doing it. I am going to, kind of like I did with the petals of the flower, I'm just going to get it full of the thicket and then just start, start doing the, now I can do them like this. Or I can also do where I'm, I'm creating an actual petal shape and pulling it down. Or I can do a combination of both. You can add in, if you want to add in some white, add in some yellow. White will definitely help with the transparency, make it a little more opaque. I think your white has a lot of pigment in it. That's why it helps with that. Um, but you can do, now I'm getting red in here, where I'm getting that from, but anyhow, pull it down and just do little leaves like that. And I'm just going back and forth into the different paints. But I want it to be, you know, definitely be opaque. And I can come over here, sorry. Still haven't gotten a new video camera, so I'm using my regular camera. Hopefully, eventually, I'll do that. I miss my video camera. Like I said, you can you know do a variety. You can do different. You don't have to even do. 
I just thought I would stick with the round brushes for this video and just show you, you know, some different style of leaves. And I can put some green in there, some for forest moss, like that. Like I said, it's just, just kind of, I don't want to say whimsical, but very loose. Not anything that's real difficult to do. Again, I can put some white in here if I want to kind of make it a little different. And this is one down here where I'm just going to come into my to where I had put that little stem. That's why I said I'm not going to worry too much about those because I'm going to come in here with some anyways. Some little leaves. I don't have to do them very big. They can be just little swipes. Like that. And I got a little white or a little red in it. Put some green in there. It's fun. I mean, I think I add lights to these. I need to remember to put my my little link to the lights that I use because <clears throat> when I sell these, I actually end up painting around the whole bottle. The only ones I typically don't are the uh, the uh, Jägermeister bottles. I don't typically paint all the way around those. I just paint in the front because of the way they're designed. However, I mean, you can paint just the fronts of your bottles. I know some people do just that. And that's fine. I mean, that's pretty just the fronts or all the way around put some like that let's see what else we need to do maybe some more I like my my leaves a lot of times going in different directions too so like this one will come like it's going hanging down like that I can even add a third one over here. And as these dry too, you can actually go back over them if maybe you want to put in another color to them. Let them dry a little bit and then go back in and add it. That'll help with the making them more opaque also. Let's see where we want to go here. I'm going to go like this up with that one and I apologize my furnace is getting ready to start. I was hoping I would get through this before that happened but I did not. So you can come down here and do little little leaves like this down your little branches at the bottom. Kind of filling them. Sorry, let me make sure I'm on here. Let's go different directions with them. Um, I like when there's a variance in the colors of the leaves. I think that helps to just add interest to your design. And we'll put maybe another one down here. Put a little light in it. And I kind of feel like if you can hold a brush, you can paint. And if for some reason you can't hold a brush, then maybe that's not something you can do. But I think with my designs, they're pretty darn simple. And I, and I again, I intentionally do that because I want... All right, the next thing I'm going to do is tap in my centers. I'm going to take my Dear Foot Stippler, tap it into the School Bus Yellow. And I always tap it off, once I stick it in the paint, tap it off so hopefully I'm not getting too much paint on it at one time. I'm just going to come through, place my centers wherever I think they need to be, however big I want them to be, because I'm going to go over them again. I always don't typically just do one color in my centers, sometimes I do. And I like a looser center. 
So you'll find that even though I'm tapping them in with a brush, I will then add more colors to it and it'll be just kind of loose. Again, on this part, if you want to not have the mixture of color from beneath what you've painted, then hit it with a heat gun. That will help. My next step, I'm gonna kind of get that wiped off a little bit. I'm gonna stick it in the, the yellow ochre. So I have a little bit of yellow, yellow ochre where I had the school bus yellow and the burnt umber on the back of it. And then I'm gonna come back in, tapping that in, and I want it just to be real, kind of just real random. A little bit of brown, a little bit of the gold, well, yellow, yellow ochre. And then hit, hit the heel of it. Like I said, they're not real, like they're all like this way or that way. They're not real, I don't even think the word, like they're not gonna all be the same. They're gonna be different look different. And you can put the brown, if you want to put the brown like simulating it like you are considering that the bottom, like the flower is heading a different direction, you, know, you can use that to judge the direction the flower is going in. That makes sense. So where I put the yellow ochre, I'm considering that to be the top of the flower, if that makes more sense what I'm trying to say. And again, you can just keep working them, get them to, way, to look the way you want. Put some more yellow ochre over them. You can pounce the brown a little bit more. I mean, you can do more pouncing with this brush than what I'm doing. I'm just basically tapping in the centers with it and not creating a specific design with it. It's more of a loose. Now if you want, I always, and I didn't do this on my sample, but I like to go back in and tap in a little bit of white. It's just very little. It's just very, very random. So you basically have three colors on your, in your centers. And then what I'm going to do is take my little stylus, dip it into my white, and I'm gonna come through here and just, just tap in some little dots around the center. And they don't have to be in any order or size. Not doing it around the entire center, just towards the bottom of the center. And no specific set of dots either. I don't care how many you put. Just put them, put however many you want. Very simple. Very simple as you can see. We're almost finished. Thanks so much for sticking with me on this. Feel free to stay around and see some more videos. I have plenty of them. All right, and there you have it. Pretty darn easy. Not difficult at all. I hope you like it. If you do, make sure you give me a big thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe, hit that notification bell. And before you leave, please hit that share button that you'll find underneath the video. Share this video on your social network with all your family and friends. I would greatly appreciate it. Until the next time, please stay safe and healthy and have a good one.